Hello everyone, my name is Brian Getz. I'm Deputy Director of Public Works with the City of Portsmouth. And I'd like to give you a little bit of history and overview of our water system and uh, both in Portsmouth and Pease. So I will share my screen and we will start with the basics. Nice little photo of the uh, Elmy Reservoir out in Madbury during a nice fall fall day. Staff out there doing some water quality sampling and analysis and an opportunity to take a photo while they're at it. So the, uh, the city of Portsmouth water system history dates way back um, to the earliest days. And in 1797, the Portsmouth Aqueduct Company was formed as an act by an act of the New Hampshire legislature. Um, so for years it operated under uh, those auspices. And in 1891, the uh, city took over the system. And uh, what you can see here are some artifacts uh, dug up, up from the earliest days of uh, the water system actually had wooden pipes that were hollowed out and uh, delivered water before we had uh, the metal pipes that are currently there. When the city took over the water system, uh, the water sources at the time were the Sherburn Springs, the Fountainhead Springs, and the Haven Springs. And all of these sources continue to be sources of water for the water system today. They actually uh, predated that 1891 um, takeover. And uh, Sherburn is now the Collins Well site. Fountainhead Springs is where the Smith Well is. And uh, the Haven Springs uh, where the Haven Well is. And here's a map um, drawn up at the time the city took over uh, the system. And you can see uh, the area between uh, the North South Mill Ponds and all the piping network that existed then. And uh, many areas have been upgraded um, since then, but uh, service that's been provided um, ever since that time. And the city is one of the first water systems in New Hampshire to meter all their customers. And this is a water meter that's uh, from 1914. And that was the uh, time frame that the, uh, the city started to meter everywhere. And uh, we continue to do so today. If you are interested in more history of the water system and actually seeing some of these artifacts, um, you, you're welcome to, uh, to go to Strawberry Bank. And, and if you, uh, Come to Strawberry Bank. They have a Water Has a Memory exhibit that we partnered with the uh, um, asked to partner by the Strawberry Bank um, for their exhibit about sea level rise and how the uh, Strawberry Bank and the city is responding to that. But there's also um, a good bit of history of the water and wastewater systems there together with stormwater. In the 1950s, um, when the Pease Air Base uh, came to the Pease area, um, they uh, took over the water sources at the time. Um, and in order to replace that water, they had to seek out um, the amount of water available um, to supply that and ended up uh, building the Bellamy Reservoir and uh, three groundwater wells at the time to replace that. And that water was pumped and piped over to Newington and delivered throughout this regional area. And here's the original water treatment facility on the left and a shot from the 1960s of the control room and the operator at the time uh, working in the control room, uh, keeping an eye on things and uh, surface water treatment facility. In the 1990s, uh, <clears throat> Pease International Trade Board um, was formed and took over the Pease water system. And uh, they developed a municipal agreement with the city of Portsmouth and we have been operating this system um, since that time. So uh, overall snapshot of the regional water system, you can see the Bellamy Reservoir way up in Madbury and uh, the treatment facility that then uh, pumps water down through uh, Madbury, a bit of Dover, a bit of Durham under the bay and into Newington. So we ser serve a good portion of Newington, especially the waterfront area and all the business in the mall. Um, we serve Greenland, uh, 
uh, some of rye and support um, the rye water district with some wholesale water and Newcastle and the Newcastle water district as well. Uh, the Pease International Trade Port is a separate water system unto itself, um, but we also operate that. And then of course, the city of Portsmouth. And here's a breakdown of the water supplied to these communities uh, through our metered customer data. And as you can see, about 76.8% uh, are the combined Portsmouth and Pease customers. And then the breakdown of the other communities um, on the right. So currently the, the water system and, and these numbers are always uh, changing day to day due to new pipes going in and, and maintenance and changes to the system and customers uh, coming and going to some degree, but uh, you can see you know, the pipes, the hydrants, we have close to 3000 valves in the system and uh, 8,500 customers. The Pease drinking water system has uh, 17 miles of pipe um, 112 hydrants and about 130 metered customers, but these customers are much larger than uh, than just your day-to-day -day residential with all the business that is out at Pease. Uh, as many may know, if you're familiar with Portsmouth, the Pease PFAS contamination that occurred in 2014, it was discovered um, back in May after some sampling that uh, firefighting foam out on the air, airport had uh, caused contamination of the wells and the, uh, the Haven well was shut down. The other two wells, the Smith and the Harrison were uh, able to be maintained and some temporary treatment put on those eventually. Seven years later, we have a full treatment system in place. There were a lot of components, a lot of work that went into uh, that. That's a whole other aspect. If you're interested, there's uh, many ways to, to get additional information on that. And there's uh, the Restoration Advisory Board for PEs that meets quarterly that also goes uh, through that. But in the end, uh, we uh, built a facility after much piloting study and design. And what you can see on the left is when construction started April of 2019. And on the right, uh, when it was completed in 2021. And we are fortunate to uh, share this uh, with some dedication of uh, city staff um, and uh, our representatives, including Senator Shaheen Hassan and Representative Pappas last year. So the water system is maintained by a, a, our own crews um, and some of these shots of them doing work out in the field, working on hydrants, fixing um, some uh, pipe on the la lower left and then uh, installing new pipe in the upper left. And uh, they do a lot of preventive maintenance. They do hydrant flushing, which we are just finishing up for this year, May of uh, 2022, uh, uh, customer service work, uh, infrastructure replacement and coordination with all the other work that is done by private contractors uh, throughout, which in, includes lots of locating where our pipes are so we can line them out so nobody uh, hits them when they do their own work. And this work is 24-7, uh, day and night, all seasons. So um, on the left, uh, some work downtown during uh, warmer weather, but on the right, um, our working on a water main break um, that uh, occurred in the, the dead of night in the cold of winter. Our uh, team is, is led by a very experienced staff, our general foreman, Jim Tao in the upper right, and uh, uh, Jason Beavers, our water foreman, Jim Siegel, our asset management coordinator in charge of our meter crew, and then lots of support staff, our GIS um, manager um, for mapping, a lot of administrative support and of course our own uh, water billing department. So when you're a customer of uh, Portsmouth, um, your responsibility really starts at the curb stop. So this uh, diagram shows you uh, where our water mains are. This is a kind of general layout of just about any customer. It, it would vary in distance and location of some of these, but uh, the components are fairly well um, shown um, and uh, so you have a water main, you have the pipeline that is going um, 
the service line and there's a curb stop and that generally is at the property boundary. Um, it can be out near a, you know, a sidewalk, curb, that, um, but usually at the property line and, and that's the shutoff valve and the piping beyond that is uh, the customer's piping. And so responsibility on the left side would be the city of Portsmouth on the right is the customer. We do have meters that are inside, located inside, um, and we're responsible for the meters, but the customer's responsible to make sure that it's located in a good location and won't freeze and uh, uh, protected in that way. And the metering system itself has been upgraded over years. We went to a radio read system uh, over 10 years ago now, and all our meters uh, are hooked to radio systems that we can get daily, even hourly reads if necessary, and they come back to our billing system and they um, enable us to be able to let people know or, or you know, meter our customers daily, which is very helpful uh, because we can at times notice some uh, leaks due to leak codes and we can notify people. And here's our meter staff, three out of the four staff members that are out there every day. And as you can see, some of the data just from last year of all the amount of work they do. Um, can't say enough about our meter crew and well, our overall staff, but, but certainly they are um, out there every day and, and touching base with our customers. And as you can see by these numbers, um, very busy. We also have a backflow prevention um, crew that is out there every day testing what are backflow devices. So basically on the, the middle screen on the left, you can see the meter and the water flows through this device and into um, generally larger commercial buildings. And uh, water can only flow one way and to flow back, uh, there are check valves. And this is to prevent any potential contamination that could come from uh, the service inside a building um, if there were a loss in pressure or, or something like that. These devices not only have to be installed and put in there, but they are tested sometimes uh, at least annually and sometimes twice annually. And as you can see, um, our staff is out there doing nearly uh, 2,400 of these tests um, each year. So our, our system is actively planning for the future. There's a lot of questions that always come to us with development in the city. You know, how are we uh, managing that and how are we gonna uh, keep uh, enough water in the system for the future? So as you can see, um, there have been a number of big studies done and these studies have not only, uh, you know, been done, they're not just put on the shelf, they actually have been implemented. So I think a good portion of just about everything that has been recommended, the city has been uh, working on and we have a capital improvement program and a budget um, that has been ongoing and, and, and continues. And uh, you will see even on the six year plan, there are a lot of water projects still, um, uh, pun intended, in the pipeline. Uh, the management of all this is, is done by uh, our, our staff, including the director and uh, myself, our city engineering staff that includes assistant city engineers, and we have technical support and field people, and we do hire engineering consultants to work on some of our bigger projects. And uh, why do we need all this staff? Because in the last 20 years, as you can see by this, this summary, um, we've done a lot of projects and there are a lot of big projects totaling um, over $44 million worth of work. But if you add some of the day-to-day -day work we've done, uh, we're well over $50 million in the last 20 years of upgrades. These in, have included water main replacements. This is the Lincoln, Lincoln area um, uh, water main replacement. Um, here's an here's a upgrade to the middle street in Portsmouth, and that's a big 24 inch line that went in down there. And uh, a map showing all these replacements in the last 20, 20 years, about 42 miles of water main. And again, as I said, that continues. And uh, facility wise, some, some major upgrades, both the Spinney and the Pease water tanks have been replaced. Newington Booster Station was just recently upgraded and we have two full uh, treatment facilities, the Madbury and the Pease uh, treatment facilities. And we've been working on sources of supply, um, upgrades of the Harrison well, the Madbury well, 
We have Madbury Well 5 now. Greenland Well has been fully replaced, and we're currently working on the uh, Collins Well to install a Collins Well 2 to bring that back to its full capacity of 324,000 gallons a day. So all this work does see some, um, some value, as, as you can see from this shot. Um, when this fire occurred at the State Street Saloon, uh, you can see there's a, quite a bit of water going on just in this photo, but that's only the, the front of the building. There was also um, streams of fire going uh, through uh, on, the, on the backside. And all told, uh, when we checked our system uh, data, that we were upwards of 10,000 gallons of water per minute that was delivered at peak time and almost a million gallons for that fire. So again, all these upgrades do show um, you know, the, the, the improvements in the system. But we, we've not only done that, we've, we've made some major efforts to address water efficiency in the city. And these are some of the uh, highlights, including some awards that we've been um, given through uh, our, our efforts. And uh, we also most recently are thinking blue and that's water, wastewater and stormwater all together. Uh, this, this graphic shows a timeline of, of all these efforts um, and all the things we've done, but also how our analysis shows that we have uh, dropped our um, average residential water use from about 194 gallons a day down to 150. Now this even includes multifamily. So um, on a single family residential home, those numbers are, are even a little bit less. And we're uh, happy to say that we, we still keep our water rebate program active. We were the first such program in New Hampshire and um, still believe to date, we are the only system that's offering these rebates um, and about a thousand of them to date. People can get $100 for installing a low flow toilet and $150 for a high efficiency washing machine. What is the value in that? Well, the city of Portsmouth has some old housing stock and a lot of those, if they haven't upgraded their toilet for uh, obvious reasons, if it's still working, um, an old toilet might use anywhere up to five, even more gallons of flush in the 80s. They did reduce them down to three and a half, but now you can get 1.6 gallons or less for, uh, for flush. And all these efforts are seeing um, some rewards in the, the uh, as you can see through the uh, 90s, uh, there was a progression of additional water going up and up in use. And uh, last year we had the, the lowest pumpage um, in the last 40 years in the system and credit that to the water efficiency efforts but also leak detection. So we've been very active with out there. We have data loggers, we have staff that are out there every day checking on leaks. And when you fix the leaks, you don't end up pumping water that then just gets lost back to the ground. And here's a graphic showing that. So this is actually the, uh, the uh, upwards to uh, showing that, that we have really reduced our uh, differential between what we pump and what we uh, have delivered. So I want to thank you for this uh, quick little overview. And, and certainly there's a lot more information and a lot more um, available to you. So feel free to uh, get a hold of cityofportsmouth.com and at Public Works and go to the water tab and you'll find a whole lot of different uh, additional information for you. So appreciate the time and uh, we'll head on to other topics. Thank you.